Hey everyone, I'm Jessica, and today I'm excited to talk about my top solo storytelling games. I am known for telling a ton of stories no matter what type of game I'm playing, <laughs> but there are a few that really shine and really focus in on that storytelling element. And one of the big reasons why I'm looking at this now is because I've been working on Da, 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 the Siblings Trouble Expanded Deluxe Edition. Full disclosure, I work for Pencil First Games. That's a Pencil First Games title. This one is awesome. Playing a cooperative storytelling adventure game as siblings, kind of like a Goonies style adventure. So looking at that, I looked at the rest of my collection and said, what else tells a story in these ways? So let's go through what I picked out in no particular order because I can never pick favorites. I can just make lists. <laughs> So first up is Pauper's Ladder. I've talked about this one a few times. This one is a really cool adventure where you're playing as a pauper type character, going around the world, you're flipping over cards, putting it out on a map, you have a bird companion who can also travel out there, and you kind of weave this tale of what happens to your character as you are traveling around to these different locations, experiencing different encounters, picking up ingredients, trading some stuff, picking up all this sort of cool equipment, maybe running across a dragon. There's so much stuff included in those card decks for the different locations. And it's really cool because the expansions actually don't just get mixed in together. You kind of have separate adventures. So you can kind of have all different sorts of stories that you're telling for these different characters. I really enjoy this one, especially because you have this full-fledged adventure that takes place over maybe like 30 to 45 minutes. So really quick, but a really cool and fleshed out world that I love exploring and seeing my characters have some fun. <laughs> Another one, maybe not as much storytelling as you might think, but Obsession. My top solo game. I absolutely love this game. Favorite game of all time. <laughs> It has a rating of 10 and is the only game at this point that has ever earned that rating for me. I love it. That's about all there is to say about it in terms of what I love. But this one is sort of like Downton Abbey in a sort of way, but you're playing through sort of a Victorian um, era uh, play, I guess. You have a family and you have their country estate and you are both managing their social circle as well as building out that estate and hosting different activities. You have staff who you need to be able to kind of allocate to helping out in certain instances. And it's just really cool. It is very strategic, but I find that the best way to enjoy Obsession is to tell a story throughout. I have a horrible British accent that I will sometimes put on as I am playing. Just to add to it, I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> But I find that it's really cool just to have guests that sort of come back, um, certain ones who are really terrible to have around, but it's just funny to see them come back and just kind of see what happens with them. So I always add a story to Obsession. Um, it's not designed as a storytelling game, but I find that that is one of the best ways to enjoy it like that. Next up is one that probably a lot of people have heard of. It's a little bit older, um, but it's been out for a while. Legends of Andor. This one, you have an adventuring party that you kind of play through these storybook chapters. Um, and it kind of tells you what happens. You kind of reach certain points and we'll flip over a card to get to the next sort of piece of the story. However, I don't find that I'm just following the story and that's it and it's just telling that. I find that the different characters, sometimes one of them will do something great um, or I'll get a great role or something random will happen that is really good. And that character sort of comes to life a little bit more. And I have a little bit more of a story going around the chapters and the stories as they're happening. It is actually a very cool, um, I'm trying to think how to describe it, um, but there are enemies out on the board, but you're almost encouraged not to get into too many battles as that advances the story quickly. So you kind of have to plan it and it's more of a sort of strategic movement game than just straight up, I gotta go fight these bad monsters and take them out and I'm done. It's more like, how do I move around them? Um, and in that way, you sort of get the story of what these characters are doing 
and how they are trying to complete each legend. Very fun. Another one that I need to play again soon is called Aftermath. And Aftermath is a really cool campaign style game where you are playing as these very small creatures that have intelligence. So like guinea pigs and mice and rats and all the humans just disappeared one day. So they are left on the planet and you have kind of the remnants of society that they're kind of going through. Um, but there's a whole overarching story going on with some other characters that are in the game. And I really, really enjoyed, I've played only one campaign of this. I'm planning on going back soon. <laughs> I don't know if it has the long-term staying power as some other games, because again, it's it's not a static campaign, but it is, you know, it's, it's a campaign style game that's not going to have tons of variety forever. But for what it offers, I love just seeing what happens on each mission. There's this really cool mechanic where you're actually building up your home base or headquarters. And you see that visually with the cards that you will add to your area. It's just really nice to see it sort of take shape and see how the characters are influencing that based on their success in different areas. Um, and there's just a lot of cool things of how we're using um, like human type things as tools and even uh, equipment or vehicles <laughs> for these small creatures just to see what they do with those and how that's used. It's a really cool setting. Um, and again, it just it has a lot of cool storytelling opportunities there. Moving along. Another one. Oltrie. It's got two, two accents. <laughs> Um, that's how I pronounce it, and I believe that's the, the correct pronunciation of Oltrier. But this one is a cool one where you are actually sort of, it's kind of like a tower defense style game where you have the satrapy and a giant castle in the middle, but you have all the surrounding regions. Problems can pop up. Um, there's all sorts of things that may happen, and you play through this one, sort of like Legends of Andor. You have a storybook or a chapter-based approach to it that you're going to play through. I really, really enjoy this one. It has some of the best meeples that I have seen. It is these riders on horses that are just so cool. I use those in other games too because I love them so much. But the characters really feel like they come alive here because of what they do. Sometimes you'll have a couple of them working towards a common goal and you sort of see how those characters are interacting together and there's a whole story centered around them. Whereas another character might be off somewhere else supposedly helping out and doing well, but you know, rolling really poorly or just having a bad time <laughs> with just doing very, very poorly. I actually love those pieces of stories to these games. Even if I lose, there is just that memorable moment of being like, yeah, you know what? It was her fault or it was his fault. They were the one that just could not pull things together. <laughs> to get me the win. I will try again and we'll see if they can actually pull themselves together atop those ponies. <laughs> and I am excited because there are a lot of different chronicles to play through here. There's a couple of short ones, there's more long ones. Um, and I think there's actually an expansion coming out for this soon that seems to add some spookier elements, um, which I'm actually looking forward to, to see how that changes things up. Lots of cool stories though. Oh, I've got more though. <laughs> Another one, which is criminally underplayed, which describes about 80 to 90% of my collection is Oath. Oath. Yes, Oath. Now, in terms of solo, there is a Clockwork Prince option. I have never tried it because I actually do this um, playing three-handed, which I love because three-handed actually gives you the chance to focus in on the story aspect. So it's not as strategic as it might be, um, but I haven't found that this really takes away anything. You lose a little bit with hidden information where it's a little more known, um, but what I do is I just focus in on the story. And I have had some really, really interesting plays. Um, I actually couple this with my calico critters. <laughs> so I have a bunch of little animals that are part of those stories um, and they're kind of guiding those factions and seeing what happens. But this is, Oath is a very unique sort of game. This one I think is either, it's one of those ones where you'll either love it 
or no. <laughs> but that is because of the game that it is. This is not so much um, focused in on those strategies. Like I said, yes, you can play to win, but I think you get the most value out of Oath when you focus in on telling the story of what all these factions are doing um, and really just kind of enjoy it for what it is. If you play it um, in terms of like, I want to win or I'm going to make that player win because that way I'm in a better position going forward. Because again, Oath actually continues through um, from play to play in different sessions. So what you do in one play actually carries through the, to the next and you actually expand on what's going on and it's it's a really cool system. I really think though, you need to go in for storytelling. Um, again, I think some people may enjoy this in terms of just playing it strategically, but this is why it's on my storytelling list because the stories you can tell with this are just really, really cool. I need to get back to it and actually chronicle what is going on in this world because in a way you can kind of see the flow of history um, and how things kind of, you know, wax and wane in terms of power of different groups and everything. It's just, it's a really cool system that I need to get back to my table. <laughs> uh, let's see, another one, which I don't have the box for because I store this separately but may have heard of it, Once Upon a Time, the storytelling game. This one I don't specifically use in terms of playing it solo and just going through the cards. I use these cards though for a lot of role-playing things. Um, so for instance, you draw cards. There's tons of cards, which I should have pulled out before to show you. <laughs> <laughs> it would have made this much easier. Um, but you have, there are endings that you might have um, that you would pull and that can tell you, sort of guide your decisions and how you're telling a story. But more importantly, you have things like aspects and locations and places and characters. So like here's a queen. Um, and these, what I do with these is I will just pull these when I'm doing role-playing games or wherever where I need a little inspiration. I'll pull a card and say, okay, let me incorporate that into my story. It is a fantastic tool in that regard. Um, there are tons and tons and tons of cards. Not all of them have unique illustrations, but even just having a place labeled as a battlefield, just having that come into play, that will sometimes change my story and I'll say, oh, a battle, all right, there was a battle here. So let's go through what that might mean. There are tons of cards. Can I even show? I have this. If you have a an eagle eye, I'm pretty sure this was the insert for Marvel Champions. But that's how many cards there are. That's... <laughs> there are tons of those. Um, I have all of the expansions. I love the artwork in it. It just fits in with my sort of style and just helps me with storytelling in general. Love that one. One that, again, might not be top of mind for storytelling. That would be The Pursuit of Happiness. I know what you're thinking. That's a strategy game. That's like action selection and work. What are you talking about? That, I'm going to put it over here. It's too big. <laughs> the Pursuit of Happiness. I played this solo when it first arrived 10 times. I got it to the table immediately. I just started playing through, adding in expansions. This is about the story of an individual's life. You go through life stages. If you've played the game of life, this is sort of like that, but a lot more strategic um, and it has a lot more going on in it, but it is so fun to see the story of someone's life just go by um, and kind of influence that and see like the different items and activities they do, um, some of the projects they take on, the job they, they go after. Um, if they have a partner or if they have kids, what they do in the community, the nostalgia events from their childhood that they bring into adulthood and tying all of that together, it is awesome. And again, it's not a traditional storytelling type of game, but I think this is another one where if you focus on just winning and getting long-term happiness, which is victory points, you'll get a high score and okay. But I don't think that is really getting to the whole experience. I think the experience is seeing just the fun that you can have in these lives 
Um, and it's just, it's nice to be able to just look at all the cards at the end. It's a very, it's a card based game, tons and tons of cards. I showed you once upon a time just now, there's a lot more <laughs> in the pursuit of happiness. Um, but just seeing that and telling the story of their life once you get to the end um, and it's it's really nice. And I, I don't find it depressing because I know that you're, they're gonna get to old age and then that's it, life is over. But to look back and tell the story and to have experienced all that is just really fun. I will end with another storytelling type of thing that I have that I know is extremely hard to find and out of print. But I will mention it here just because it is fantastic for storytelling. And that is the Story World series. This is the big main box. Um, I believe there are 40 cards in this one. I think, I don't know. These are eons old. I, mean, I got these like at least 10 years ago. Um, but the cards, so this one actually comes with, there's a storytelling book and the cards all have these really, really intricate illustrations on them. Let me grab them just to show you kind of what those look like. Um, but you have like, this is one of the cards, right? which at first glance might be like, okay, sure, whatever. Um, but it actually has questions on the back that can help you with storytelling and kind of looking at what's in depicted in that image. And the cool thing about these is that every card, I shouldn't say every, I think almost every single card in the entire set has another card's image sort of hidden in the background. So it actually helps with bringing those together if you draw them at the same time. And they are really cool too, let me see, in this set. The nice thing about them is that they actually depict different artists. So for this one, like you can see the, the style here, and then we would go into and see, there's, there's a completely different artistic style for another 10 cards. Ooh, these ones are usually my favorites. Just the, the style of that and all the, the different intricate things and the way that you can just there's stories to tell about a single card um and then of course there's another set like that at the very end i love these for storytelling again i am very much into storytelling <laughs> it's just it's a fun experience for me it makes every game very memorable story world i haven't used these cards in a while um but just as a i mean i collected them <laughs> <laughs> and let me see if I can grab what I have, but I have, uh oh, Popper's Ladder falling over back there. It's fine. I have the whole set <laughs> of them um, with every type of story world card in there. There's, there's so much. And I just love seeing the way those connect and how you can tell a story again with cards. Um, a lot of the games that I, I think all of them here the main focus is on those cards. And it doesn't have to be a bunch of writing on the card. It can be just the image. It can be the name of the card. There's so much to have fun with. And I just really enjoy those storytelling moments. Solo is fantastic for me because, you know, I love solo. That's, <laughs> that's who I am. I also enjoy some of these multiplayer, but I really feel like I get the full experience when there's a story being told, either cooperatively with other people or just me going off on wild tangents, <laughs> the most random things possible. But that is it. Those are some of my favorite storytelling games. Technically, most of the games on these shelves fall into that because I like telling stories as I'm playing. Um, but yeah, that is everything. If you have any favorite storytelling games that I did not cover here that you enjoy, feel free to leave those in the comments. Talk about what you love about them and that, again, storytelling day. <laughs> the end. <laughs> As always, thanks so much for, walk for, for walking, for watching. <laughs> Hopefully you get some cool games to your table soon. <laughs> thanks. Bye.